Hi everyone, thanks so much for joining us for November's Stampin' Class by Mail. My name is Gina Wieselman of MySweetPaper.com and I'm so excited for the beautiful cards you're making this month using the Wrapped in Plaid suite of products. I've teamed up with Brenda Cardinal, another Stampin' Up! demonstrator, uh, to offer these classes for you. And this month, it's Brenda's turn to show you everything you need to know about stamping and assembling the cards. Next month, it'll be my turn, and I already have some great designs ready to go. So make sure to stay tuned to the end of this video to see the sneak peeks of those card designs. Happy stamping, and here's Brenda. Hi everyone, I'm Brenda Cardinal of stampintulip.stampitup.net. And I can't wait to share with you the Wrapped in Plaid suite of products by Stampin' Up. For me, this suite of products is kind of nostalgic. It reminds me of a Christmas dress my mom made me when I was a little girl. It had a black velvet top and a pretty plaid taffeta skirt with a sash around the middle with a bow tied in back. This suite has all the sparkle the holidays warrant with its pretty gold accents in the designer series paper, the ribbon, and the mini pizza boxes, and of course the jingle bells. Today, I'm going to show you how to make three different card designs using this suite. If you have registered for the November stamp class by mail, you'll receive everything you need in the mail, cut and ready to go to stamp and assemble your cards. The supplies also include envelopes and accessories to complete nine cards, three each of the three designs. If you didn't register for this class by mail, I'll show you a still shot of the parts and pieces needed for each card that will include measurements. This way you can cut and prep everything as needed. Please feel free to reach out to me or Gina if you need any supplies or if you'd like to learn more about becoming a Stamping Up! demonstrator. I can't wait to show you how to make these lovely cards. Let's get started. Here's a picture of all the parts and pieces that you'll need for this card. We've included the dimensions so it's easy for you to be able to replicate. So our first card design, this is what we're working towards. We're going to start off by stamping our outside greeting in Knight of Navy ink. And when I I'm working with um, stamping on Whisper White cardstock, um, especially when I have a grid paper behind it. It's kind of hard for me to find the edge. So what I like to do is put a piece of uh, basic black paper or cardstock behind that, and then I know right where my edges are. So our outside greening, we want to tuck it up into the upper right-hand corner. Okay, there we go. And then we also want to stamp our inside greeting in Night of Navy ink as well. All right. And then we need to stamp our shaded spruce Christmas tree. And we're going to stamp that in Night of Navy ink as well. Now, for the class, you are gonna make three cards, and so you'll stamp three trees on this piece, uh, and then when we punch them out, we'll have one for each card. What I like to do is, and I'm right-handed, so that might be important uh, to note, is stamp one tree on the right side, flip my cardstock around, ink up my stamp again, stamp another tree on the right side, and then stamp the third one halfway in between, so right in the middle of that. Now, when I go to punch these, what I've done for myself is I always have a handle to hang on to on the left side. So I punch this tree out, then I'd move to this one and punch it out, then I flip it around and then punch that third one out, okay? Now, you'll note here that we have a second tree in Whisper White just peeking out a little bit so that our tree doesn't get lost in that darker background. So again, you'd punch one tree out, similar to how we punched the shaded spruce trees out in the Whisper White cardstock. So this particular tree, not only does it have the outline, but it also has the fill in so that you can create a tree that looks like that. And as a matter of fact, I decided to do that on the envelope for a little accent as well. But we're gonna use it slightly different. 
So we're going to switch from Night of Navy ink to our Cherry Cobbler ink. And we're going to use our fill-in stamp to create a fun background on our Cherry Cobbler piece. So I'll stamp it. Cherry Cobbler ink on Cherry Cobbler cardstock. I'm just going back and forth, kind of following the diagonal pattern that the Christmas tree, because it's a triangle, naturally happens here. Okay, so there we go. We have a little background. And now we want to create our banner. So, you know, if you happen to have the triple banner punch, that would work out great. You just pop it in here and punch that out. But if you don't have that, I, I can show you how to do that. So I'm going to take a pencil here and our grid paper has a regular standard ruler across the bottom, but at the, at the opposite end, it has um, a ruler that starts at zero and then works its way out. And I know one inch is kind of easy to figure this out, but when I'm trying to figure out the center of something, this always works out really well for me to use this grid paper. So I'll mark the center with a pencil here, and then I'll take our paper snips and I'll snip a vertical line, oh, probably about anywhere from half inch to five eighths of an inch. And I'll work from the left side and cut towards my vertical line. And then I'll work from my right corner and cut towards a vertical line. Let's see how I did. There we go. And that's how you can create a banner just using your paper snips. All right, so now we just need to assemble our card. And let's start out by taking our Knight of Navy cardstock and our Whisper White piece that we stamped our outside greeting. And we'll use snail. I'm going to be very generous with my snail here. I'll make sure I have good adhesion. And there we go. We're going to center that up. Put a little pressure on that. All right. And then we'll take our very pretty um, clad piece and we're going to put this so that it lines up the top and bottom of our Knight of Navy and off to the left side of our Whisper White piece. Then we'll add our banner. Now the banner is a little longer than probably what you'd need. And the reason we did that is so that if you missed um, making your banner and you would like to do it again, you have a little extra to work with. So put it where you would like it. A little white showing on the bottom. And then we'll take our paper snips and trim this off. There we go. Then we're going to attach that to our card front. And I'm going to take my bone folder here and make sure I get a nice crease with that. And then we'll add this to the front. Again, this will go centered. Now, if I know we can't punch this second uh, tree up, but let me show you, if I just put that down there, it feels like we kind of lose the tree. So that's why we punched a second tree in Whisper White, and we're gonna attach those two with just a hint of the Whisper White showing on the left side of the tree. So just get that lined up. Not a lot, just a little hint. Okay. And then we're going to bring in our Stampin' Dimensionals. We probably only just need two on this. And then we'll put our tree on. And our cute envelope to go with and we're all set. Here are all the parts and pieces we'll need for our next card design.
And this is the finished card that we're working towards. So let's start out by doing our stamping. We're going to stamp our inside greeting and cherry cobbler first. So let's do that. Again, cherry cobbler is our ink color. And all right, and then we'll stamp our cherry cobbler Christmas trees. And I'm going to pull that uh, basic black cardstock back in. And um, we're going to try to create some depth by um, stamping our Christmas trees in different intensities of ink. So let me show you what I mean. So I'll ink up my cherry cobbler Christmas tree. And I'm going to stamp it off once first. And then I'm going to stamp it on my Whisper White piece of cardstock. And then before, I'm not going to ink it up again. I'm just going to move it up and over to the right and stamp it now a third time. And so what happens here is we get a different strength of ink and it gives the illusion that the second Christmas tree is behind that first one. All right. So there's our Christmas tree. Now we're going to go ahead and stamp our um, shaded spruce Christmas tree. And before I stamp that, I'll have to clean my stamp set. So let me show you what I'm going to use. I'm going to use our Simply Chamois cleaning pad. And it comes pre-moistened, but once it, it will dry out for you, you just um, at, uh, run it under a little tap water and it will uh, clean itself out a bit. It's nice purple. And then when you use it a lot, it looks like that. But not to worry, it works just the same, whether it's pretty or not so pretty. Um, one of the things I really, really love about the Simply Chamois is that it leaves no lint on your stamps. So I don't know if you've ever had that experience where you stamp an image down, and it looks like you have a little fine piece of hair in the same color that you're stamping. Um, but that uh, Simply Chamois seems to eliminate that for me. Okay, so we want one shaded spruce Christmas tree for each of our cards. And so I'm going to stamp the trees for this card, similarly to how I stamp them for the first card. So one on the right side, flip my cardstock around. One on the left side, I mean, again, the right side. And then one in between. Okay, and then I can punch them out. All right. And if I want to add a little detail to the inside of my card, before I clean that stamp up again, I could stamp one tree in the shaded spruce, move it up and over, stamp another one, and then stamp another one up, kind of up and over. So now I have those three trees on the inside of my card. And again, it looks like um, this one's in the foreground and those are behind it. Kind of a fun trick. All right, that is all of our stamping. And now we just need to assemble the card. Now you'll notice on our sample here that we have no tree stems. And so I'm going to just snip this off. So you can use your tree punch a couple of different ways, but the stamp set itself does come with a little, oh, I don't know if you can see that, little tree stem right here. So we could have added a tree stem if we had wanted to. All right. So now we're going to add our ribbon accent to the Whisper White piece. Now, remember, this is kind of fun ribbon because it has uh, two different looks. This side has the cherry cobbler with a little white accent. And if you flip it over, this side has 
uh, the white with a little cherry cobbler accent. So I'm going to go this way, I think, for this one. And the way I'm going to attach my ribbon is with um, glue dots. So I'm going to take and I'm going to put one glue dot on one end. And I'm going to peel it back and grab another glue dot for the other end. And just so it makes it a little easier for placement, I'm going to put a glue dot kind of towards the middle. Okay. So I'm going to lay my ribbon down and I'm going to kind of follow the line of my tree. So kind of parallel that. And then, whoop. okay. Note to self. If I make another one of these, don't lay that down with the glue dots on there. Pick it up. Okay, so wrap and wrap. There we go. Okay. Now I'm going to take my snail. I'm going to be real generous with my snail. And I'm going to attach my whisper white to my cherry cobbler. I'm going to get kind of close to that ribbon. Maybe even put a little on the ribbon if I can make that happen. There we go. Okay, so we're going to attach these two so we have an equal border all the way around. Okay, set that aside for a second. And now let's layer our designer series paper on top of our whisper white piece. I have to tell you, it's a little hard. Do not use the side with the plaid side with the gold accents, but I love how this designer series paper coordinates, this particular side coordinates with the stamp. Okay, so then we're going to layer this down so we have an equal border left and right in the bottom. And then we're going to attach a shaded spruce piece right there. And to do that, I'm going to use the liquid glue. When I'm going to use my liquid glue, I like to have it in a little container like this and uh, have it rest there for a couple minutes before I get started so that all the glue is forced down to the, the tip. And in that way, I don't have to push very hard to get the glue to come out because while this glue is fantastic, especially for little pieces like this, it comes out kind of fast and you don't want too much because it's liquid, so it'll, it'll spread a little bit as you put it um, down. So let's, and I'm going to cover up just the top of that designer series paper because we have nice, we have trees here. We can make sure we get that nice and straight following the tree line, bottom of the trees there. There we go. Okay. So then we're going to need our dimensionals again and we're going to flip all this over and we're going to put dimensionals on all of these. And on this one, I'm going to just a little bit bigger piece and put one in the middle. And on this one, I'm going to probably just put in the four corners. And then on the Christmas tree, probably two is good enough. All right. All righty. So let's fold our card over here using our bone folder. Make sure we get a nice crease there. And I'm going to start off by putting this piece down first. I oftentimes like to, well, I was going to say, I oftentimes like to work from top down, but I think in this case, I'm going to like, I'm going to work from the uh, card base up. All right, so uh, equal border is this side and equal border on this side. And then we'll pop this on top. Now I'm going to have the equal border here, here, and here. And then we'll put our Christmas tree on. And then we'll just add a little pearl accents. So we're going to have three pearls per card. And so 
some of you maybe have uh, different tools that you like to use to pick up your pearls. I like to use my paper snips, a tool that I already have, although we have a really cool tool called Take Your Pick tool that works fantastic for this as well. All right, I'm not going to push them down until I decide if that's how I like it to look. It is, so I'll just put a little pressure on there so we make sure we make good contact. And there we go. And you could also stamp your envelope to coordinate with your card as well. And here are the supplies for our last card. This last card is really fun. It's a fun fold card, so it opens like this, and then it opens like that. All right, let's get started. Uh, we're gonna start by stamping, or punching, I should say, the uh, tree out of our Whisper White cardstock. Now you have two pieces of Whisper White cardstock cut exactly the same way. So the first one, it, we're gonna use for the front, and the second one we'll use for the inside grading. So let's start out by punching our tree out of the first one. Now this will just slide right in there. So make sure it's all the way to the base of the punch and then just kind of center it up and then punch it out. Now we're going to save the tree. I'm going to use it for later for the inside of the card. All right, so there we go. We have our tree punched out and now we're going to do our stamping and cherry cobbler. So again, I'm going to lay my Whisper White piece on top of my basic black cardstock and stamp the outside greeting in Cherry Cobbler. Okay. And then I'm gonna pull in my piece for the inside of my card and stamp Merry Christmas. All right, there we go. So set those aside and we're done with cherry cobbler ink. And now we're gonna use our plaid Christmas tree to create a background. So let's stamp those plaid trees, shaded spruce ink. Now because the tree is such a big bold image, I'm gonna bring my stamp and pierce mat in there to give me a little extra cushion. And because I'm gonna be stamping the trees randomly, I'm gonna cover that up with a piece of uh, computer paper so I don't um, get ink on my stamp and pierce mat. So ink up our stamp and we're just gonna start by stamping our trees and I'm just gonna kind of randomly put them on there. I'm gonna turn my cardstock so all my trees aren't going the same direction. Kind of play with this a little bit. And again, it's not our main focal point, so it's not like you have to be too terribly precise about that. Now let's see how I want to, one more, maybe like that. All right. There we go. All right. You could just put this tree in here in white, but we could also stamp it. Now, oftentimes we stamp first and then punch, but it would have been too impossible to get that exactly where we wanted for the, uh, the I should say, we sh it would be almost impossible to stamp the tree exactly in the center and then get it punched out. But the beauty of photopolymer stamps is that you can see right through them, see right where you're going. Let's see how we did. Ah, not too bad. So let's start out by assembling what I would call the little card in Cherry Cobbler. Let's do that first, okay? So let's take our Christmas tree, Whisper White piece that we punched out the tree, and I'm gonna put some snail 
around the edge and then I'm going to lay my plaid piece down on my table and then I'm going to place my tree on top. Now the reason I'm doing that is because the plaid actually has stripes in it and I wanted them to not be crooked. Okay. So once we have that down, then we're going to layer that on top of our gold foil sheet. Let's just, and just a little teeny border. Whisper White will be centered on the gold foil. So we have a little tiny border all the way around, same size. And then we'll take our cherry cobbler piece. We'll fold that in half. Give it a nice crease with our bone folder, and then this will go on top. And then the Merry Christmas will go on the inside. Okay, then our second card, if you will, is the shaded spruce, but this one kind of upside down from what you would think, right? So we'll go like that. And then we'll add our shaded spruce piece. Just a little tone on tone for a little depth and dimension. Actually, I'm gonna go, I know it sounds Backwards. I'm going to go this way because I personally can line it up better if I look at the left, top, and right sides. Okay, there we go. Let's turn it back around so we make sure we get it correct. So then we want to put adhesive on the back of our card, our cherry cobbler card, I should say. Okay, and then I'm going to open it up a little bit, slip it in here, and then Oop. I wanted the left and right side to be about the same distance, but I want the top to be just a little, a little deeper. There we go. Okay. And then we put the Christmas tree in. Now you could put it here if you wanted to. I put it down here, wherever you'd like it. And we're gonna use a snail so it's nice and flat because we don't want this to be bumpy. Okay. And then the last detail is the bow. So let me show you how to tie a perfect bow every single time. You wanna start, um, again, I'm right-handed. So start by making a loop and you want to hold it between your thumb and your pointer finger and you want the short side to be on top so the longer sides on the bottom and we take the longer piece and we wrap it around and then see how we created a hole here that our thumb is at and then we take and we push a loop through and with both hands pull it through like whoops through like that and then you just work the tails back and forth till it's the desired size that you want. Okay, perfect bow, trim the ends. Let's do it again. So make a loop, short side on top, long side on the bottom, we're gonna wrap the long side on the, from the bottom around. Notice I'm not twisting. I'm just laying it nice and flat. Little hole here. Take and push a loop through that hole. Now, this takes a little practice. I know I'm probably making it look kind of easy. I've tied lots of bows in my time. Um, but yeah, and then you just work the tails till and, and, and pull it back and forth till you get the size that you want. And then we'll just take and we'll trim up 
tails with our ribbon scissors. And then we'll take our glue dots and we'll pull our paper back till we get one glue dot. It's always easier to take the ribbon to the glue dot than it is to pull, pull up the glue dot and put it on the, on the ribbon. And then we'll put that on the top of our tree. And there you go. And again, cute little envelope to go with that. The last thing I would like to show you are some samples I made exclusively to share here first with Stampin' Class by Mail customers. The first sample has those that kind of modern Christmas tree that we've stamped in um, early espresso and filled it in with shaded spruce. They also on this one have the rhinestone basic jewels. And these cute little accents in the corner are done with the detailed trio punch. And so it's like three punches in one, a corner rounder, a little hole to punch to put ribbon through. And then here's our uh, kind of petal design. And the way you work the petal design is, see those little notches here? So you put your cardstock in so that it, it's tucked in there on that those guides. And then you punch it towards the design that you want. And there you go. Our next one features um, the stockings on the back of this plaid. Got a little crazy and I decided to fussy cut some of those little stockings out. They're so adorable. And then add a little accent on the inside. And then because I was uh, cutting, I go, you know, you think of the stockings hung by the chimney with care. So I had to cut out some more and create a swag to put my stockings on. This next card quickly became one of my favorites and it features a couple of new products in the holiday catalog. It features the iced stamp and glitter and the new Snowfall Axe Puff Paint. And I use both of those here. So let me show you how those two work. So first, let me show you how I created the, the um, hills, the snowy hills. I took a piece of shimmer paper and I cut it the same width as my shaded spruce layer. Then I took my paper snips and I just cut a little curve. Okay, and then, so it's like this. So then you just take this one and you flip it over like that. And that's how you get those kind of mountains. All right, so now we know which direction we're going here. And so then we pull them apart like that. And then we add our puff paint first. So let me bring in that basic black piece of cardstock. Now. It's suggested that you shake this up a little bit before you get started. And then you just put a thin layer along the edge, okay? And this is pretty easy to work with. And I wanna get right to the very edge of my cut line there. All right. I'm just gonna do the one side for you so you get the idea. Okay, so first you put that down. Now you could just heat it up like this. You don't have to get sparkly if you don't want to. But if you wanna add a little something extra, then the this iced stamp and glitter is pretty cool. It kind of reminds me of the sugar that you'd put on your sugar cookies. See how it's a little chunkier? So you just sprinkle that on while it's wet, obviously. and then tap off the excess, all right? Then we bring in our heat tool and then we heat that up and you'll, it's like magic, it puffs up. Let's see if you can see the magic happen here.
Okay. And you see it creates a lot of depth. And the cool thing is, is that it also adheres the glitter to it too. So now the glitter won't fall off. So there's that one. Now, a couple things about the puff paint. I put a really thick line of puff paint down the first time and uh, it got really puffy, which is not a bad look, but I thought, you know what? I think if I send this in the mail, it'll probably be flat by the time it gets there. So there's the two different looks. I like this card so much. I thought, well, what if we took this same idea and rather than um, having just the shaded spruce in the background, we actually put a piece of the plaid back there. And then, of course, we would want to add some of that fantastic ribbon and then some rhinestones. Now, the trees, actually, we could stamp them and punch them. But where they, these trees came from is the back of this piece of designer series paper. And you can line them right up and punch them out. Pretty cool. Okay. And I have to tell you, I was thinking about, well, my last name is Cardinal. Wouldn't it be cute if I had a Cardinal bird on that one? This came from the paper pumpkin. I believe it was the October paper pumpkin. And then, or, and I'll come back to this, but from the Dashing Deer set, what if we put a deer on there? I think that'd be nice too. The next card has kind of a fun fold and I got this idea right out of the holiday catalog. So let me show you how I did that. So what I did is I took two pieces of the same designer series paper and um, I layered them so that the diagonal was the same, going in the same direction, right? So it was, see how this is a single stripe here and nothing there? I did that same thing on this piece there. So layer them up and then you punch out the two trees together. Now designer series paper is thin enough that you can punch two at the same time without putting too much stress on your punch. And then what you do is you take the one of them and you fold it in half. So I have the stem folded exactly in half and up to the top of the tree. Now the tree is not symmetrical, so you don't want to try to line up the branches because not happening. Take my bowl and folder, put a nice crease on that. Okay. And then I took my a couple glue dots and I did that hot dog roll. So it ends up looking like a hot dog. And I put a couple of them on the tree there like that, on the like on the crease. And then I, I flatten it back out so I can line it up exactly. Put some pressure on. And then you can pick that back up and fold the top layer up a little bit to create a little dimension. So that's how those trees were created. I also thought, you know, this is one of those stamp sets that while it, it is geared towards Christmas, it could very easily be a great masculine card as well. Those rhinestones that I used for an earlier card and this one comes from the holiday uh, rhinestone basic jewels. And really, other than the lighter uh, blue here, these are the colors that are in the wrapped in plaid designer series paper. So I thought they were really fun to play with. The next example, um, I, I pulled in another stamp set and a set of the dies. So on the back of these two pieces are actually reindeer. And so as soon as I saw those, I thought of our dashing deer stamp set. And that's where the little deer came out of for this card, okay? So along with those are the detailed deer thinlets. Okay, so if you have a die cutting machine, you can actually cut out some deer. So this is the design I came up with 
using the wrapped in plaid suite with our Dashing Deer stamp set. In this suite, we also have these gorgeous gold um, pizza boxes. They're just stunning. And so they make great, great treat holders. What I want to point out is that they are food safe. And if you can see this, they actually are coated on the inside. So all those baked treats or caramels that you want to put in there, um, if they have a little oil that leaks through, it won't get on your, your box, the outside of your box. Other box designs, besides that one, this one, this one has a belly band that would slide off to open the box. And then um, should you run out of gold treat boxes, we also, or pizza boxes, we also have the white ones. Now these have that same coating on the inside. And this one I, I used the holly and the, the little jingle bells that come with this suite of products. They're so awesome, the three colors there. And the other thing I used out of the holiday catalog is the shimmer crystal effects. And um, so this paper didn't have any shimmer to it. So I just dropped the crystal effects on all the holly berries. Stay tuned. Gina has a few more things to share with you. Thanks so much for sharing those beautiful cards with us, Brenda. Check the email that shared this video link with you if you are a kit subscriber to find the specially curated Pinterest page that Brenda and I have put together with even more ideas for making use of your stamp set. December is my turn to design and share the cards with you, and I'm excited to show you a sneak peek of the three card designs using the Above the Clouds bundle. The bundle includes the Above the Clouds stamp set, that coordinates perfectly with the hot air balloon punch. In addition to those items, we're also going to be using the Woven Threads Designer Series paper, the half inch scalloped linen ribbon, and the 2019-2021 in color faceted dots. The registration deadline for this class is December 5th, but we also have some special bonuses if you sign up by November 25th. If you sign up by that deadline, along with your kit, you'll receive two completed cards and envelopes as a special bonus. We also have a referral bonus if you find new friends to participate in the Stampin' Class by Mail. And you can see more details about both of those bonus opportunities in the emails from Brenda and me. If you're not already on our email list, please contact one of us so that we can get you all the information you need about this and the other fun offerings we have. We'd love to receive any feedback you have to share about the class, what you liked, and how we can make it better. And we'll see you next month.